So it serves as a temporary storage. As you can see uh, here, so ito yung uh, water table natin. Nakikita niyo yung water table natin. This one, water table. So there is a uh, continuous flow ng water sa, sa soil natin. So as you can see through infiltration, ayan, so the water is uh, infiltrate the uh, the soil, pumapasok siya. Then uh, this uh, soil uh, serves as a temporary storage. Then after on, after uh, magkakaroon siya ng uh, pupunta siya sa groundwater through uh, percolation or yung downward movement ng uh, water natin in the soil, then lalabas siya through groundwater outflow sa ocean. Then that ocean due to heat, so it will uh, precipitate and evaporate, then it will be uh, condensed uh, to form clouds, then it will uh, go back again uh, through uh, rainfall sa soil natin. So that's how uh, soil is part of uh, hydrological uh, cycle. So what are the different processes in hydrology? So first we have, uh, we need to define hydrology is as the study of water cycle in nature. So hydro means uh, water and logy means or logos means study. So first uh, process is infiltration. So infiltration is simply the entry of water in the soil. So if this is the soil, so for example, this is the soil. So the entry of the water to the soil is what we call the infiltration. Then we have the, the, uh, the what we call a redistribution, which is the downward movement of water. So redistribution is somehow similar to percolation. So once the water enters the soil, so the downward movement within the soil is what we call percolation or yung ating redistribution. Then we have what we call the drainage. The drainage is the movement of excess water. So for example, this is our soil. If the soil is uh, saturated with water, ibig sabihin uh, punong-puno na ng uh, tubig yung lupa natin, so there comes a time that the water will uh, outflow or will be uh, moved out from the soil. So uh, that is what we call the drainage. Then the evaporation is the loss of water through water vapor from the soil surface. So we all know that uh, evaporation is uh, the, uh, the upward movement of, uh, of soil. When the soil uh, becomes a vapor, so it will go uh, up. Then uh, we have also the transpiration, loss of water from lip surface. So just like evaporation, transpiration is also a loss of water. So if the, uh, if the plant, for example, if this is the uh, plant, for example, the plant absorbs water uh, in the soil. Then that uh, the water will move out through the stomata in the plants. So that is what we call uh, transpiration. So karaniwan pinagsasama yung evaporation and transpiration when in, in terms of soil kasi pareha silang losses sa soil. So they are sometimes called evapotranspiration. Then again, we have the percolation and also the capillary rise or the upward movement. So capillary rise, for example, this is uh, our soil. Then be, uh, below our soil is the groundwater table or the water table. So because of the capillary rise or the uh, capil capillary movement, so uh, yung, yung water natin ay tumataas. So if you want to uh, to uh, verify this capillary rise, so uh, di ba yung soil natin, for example, uh, ilagay natin sa container, then butasan natin yung container sa ilalim ng maliit para hindi mahulog yung lupa. Then ilalagay natin siya sa tubig, pakikita nyo na yung water ay tumataas. Okay, that is capillary rise. It is because of what we call uh, the adhesion and cohesion, which is uh, mamaya i-discuss natin what's all about. What it is uh, all about. Ad adhesion and cohesion. So uh, let us discuss first the importance of soil water. So we all know that water is uh, very essential, not just only in plants, but also in humans like us. Diba? We cannot survive uh, without uh, water. Kaya nga pag sa mga, sa mga uh, uh, exploration sa outer space, di ba? Ano yung tinitignan nilang una? So the presence of water on that uh, planet. 
because water is uh, very essential. So uh, the importance of soil water, specifically uh, the water in the soil, is to feed the plants. So the plants absorbs uh, water from the, the soil. Then uh, water helps to uh, create soil and differentiate into horizons. So if you uh, if you uh, if you observe soil profile or uh, the different horizons within the soil, so makikita natin pag naghukay tayo ng lupa, makikita natin may iba't ibang layer ng, uh, ng, ng, ng soil. Bakit iba't iba yung layer? Because of the effect of soil water. Kasi yung iba, yung, sur yung sa surface, yun lang yung minsan nararating ng, uh, ng, ng, ng water natin. Then yung, uh, yung mga subsurface apart, yung below surface, yung mas malalim na part, wala ng tubig na nararating. So, magka magiging magkaiba na yung lupa mo sa ibabaw and dun sa ilalim because of the uh, of the effect of soil water. So, that's another importance of soil water. Then, uh, water brings plant nutrients into available forms for uh, plants. So, uh, so, one of the most uh, uh, important uh, uh, contribution of soil water in uh, plant nutrition is the uh, the dissolution of nutrients. So for example, ito yung roots natin. So ito yung roots natin. So roots are uh, have uh, for example negative charges. So ito yung soil natin. Negative charge din yung soil natin. For example, may nutrients diyan na naka na nakadikit which is calcium for example, calcium 2 plus. Then ito yung uh, ating uh, et, yung space between that is where the soil solution is located or yung uh, dissolved uh, nutrients natin. Nandiyan yung mga dissolved nutrients natin. Pag yung uh, calcium ay napunta dyan sa soil solution, so soil solution, so mas madali nang makukuha ng roots yung nutrients. Hindi, uh, hindi kinukuha ng, uh, ng plant roots yung nutrients directly from the soil but in the soil solution. Uh, there is a possibility na pwede rin kumuha ng nutrients yung roots directly from the soil kapag wala ng available nutrients dito sa soil solution natin. Okay? Kaya minsan na namamatay yung halaman natin because uh, yung halaman natin kailangan yung mag-exert mag ng, uh, ng energy para lang makuha yung nutrients na, na nakadikit dun sa lupa natin. Dahil uh, kulang na siya sa water or hindi na dissolve yung yung nutrients. So the the nutrients must be in the soil solution form bago ma, ma makuha ng uh, ng ng plants. Okay? I think we uh the uh discussion of this is also discussed in in the uh, in previous uh discussion. So what are the forces holding uh, water in the soil? So ito yung nabanggit ko kanina, we have uh, the what we call the cohesion and adhesion. So, uh, cohesion is the attraction between water molecules. So, ito yung water molecules natin, nakikita nyo. So, yung, uh, yung attraction between them is what we call cohesion. So, parehas silang water. Okay? But, the attraction between the water and the soil, for example, here, this is the soil, or other uh, or other materials so that is what we call adhesion adhere or dumikit okay cohide parang nagsama okay so uh, going back to the what we call capillary rise so for example ito yung soil natin di ba ito yung uh, ito yung water natin so yung water na yan yung water ay didikit sa lupa through adhesion okay then yung water naman ay didikitan siya ng another water through cohesion. So, uh, through adhesion and cohesion, so, ma tataas na, tataas yung tubig. So, yun yung tinatawag nating capillary rise. Okay? So, uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the structure of our soil water. So, we all know that water is uh, H2O, which has uh, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. 
So oxygen atom is big in terms of uh, its circumference, leaving a uh, uh, space to be a uh, leaving a negative space to be attracted by the uh, hydrogen. Okay, pa kaya siya nakakapag-attract siya ng hydrogen kasi may negative uh, charges dito na open. So kaya sila nagsasama-sama yung H2O, yung water. Okay, kaya sila nagkakadikit-dikit. So I hope uh, uh, that is all already discussed on your uh, chemistry subjects. Then uh, soil water. So soil water constituents uh, the primary source of water for terrestrial plants. So yung water natin sa soil is one of the, uh, ito yung pinagkukunan ng water ng ating mga terrestrial plants. Hindi naman sila kukuha ng water dun sa surface. For example, may baha. So yung baha na yun, kayang i-absorb ng, ng, uh, ng, ng halaman. No. It must be uh, first uh, stored on the soil, then the, the karaniwan, yung plants natin kumukuha ng water in the form uh, in the soil. Okay? So it carries the ions and the solutes to plant roots where they can be absorbed. So just like I said, uh, what I said earlier, so the, the soil nutrients or the nutrients first is uh, dissolved or uh, yes, dissolve in the in the soil solution bago makuha. So that's another uh, uh, that's the another importance of soil in the form of ions. Pag sinabi natin ions, these are either positive or negative uh, charges na uh, na nutrients natin so it is freely moving that can be absorbed by the plants so it moves uh, further in fine textured soil than in coarse textured soil and soil moisture that surrounds uh soil particles is held at varying degree of tenacity so yung soil natin uh, yung uh, water natin sa soil is uh, being held by the soil in different uh energy or in different uh, forces. Okay, may mga water tayo na madaling mat matanggal sa lupa, di ba? Like for example, the comparison of the fine texture soil and the coarse texture soil, or the clay and the sand, di ba? For example, naglagay tayo ng water, nag naglagay tayo ng water dun sa, naglagay tayo ng water dun sa, sa clay, naglakay din tayo ng water sa sand, di ba? Ano yung mas, ah, uh, mas uh, nakaka-absorb ng water. So yung clay, di ba? Yung clay natin, uh, ma-absorb niya yung tubig. Yung sand, dadaan lang dun yung tubig. Di ba? So that's uh, what we call the, uh, the the degree of tenacity. So dun na nakadepende yung availability ng nutrient, uh, ng soil water natin. Okay? Yung, yung, uh, yung clay, it is uh, very uh, very good in holding soil moisture compared to to sand. So uh, I will be uh, I will be discussing that uh, more later. So first is the energy status of soil water. So the retention and movement of water in soils, its uptake and translocation in plants, and its loss at the atmosphere are all energy-related phenomena. So the different kinds of energy are involved, inclu including a uh, potential energy, kinetic energy, and electrical energy. However, to characterize the energy of status of water, the term free energy is used. So in soil water, we are uh, using the term uh, free energy and discussing the availability of uh, water or the tenacity of the water in the soil. So free energy is a sort of summation of all other forms of energy. Also, its level in a substance is a general measurement of the tendency of that substance to attract soil water to move or to otherwise change its status that is relatively fri related primarily to differences in energy levels from one soil zone to another. The movement is from a zone where the free energy of water is high to one where the free energy is low. So ang movement ng water natin is from high uh, high free energy to low free energy so for example yung water natin is uh, considered uh, as high high uh, with high free energy so uh, ang ang movement niyan ay pupunta siya doon sa may uh, area na kung saan may low free energy yung water natin 
So these are the different forces that affect the free energy of soil. So we have the metric forces, we have the osmotic force, and the gravitational force. So the metric force is uh, refers to the attraction of soil solids for water. So yung, uh, yung attraction ng metric force is, for example, ito yung soil natin, then ito yung mga water, uh, mo water molecules natin. So the, their attraction, solid, uh, to water is what we call the metric force. So yun yung energy na nag-hold ng water. Pag uh, yung yung soil natin nag-hold siya ng water, so ang tinatawag din nat ang tinatawag dun natin ay metric force. Okay? Then the another force is what we call the osmotic force. Osmotic force refers to the attraction of ions and other solutes for water. This force also tends to reduce the free energy of the soil solution. So when we say osmotic force, it refers to the attraction of ions. So yung ions natin, yung mga single element, yung mga uh, nutrients na yan, for example, uh, ito yung mga nutrients natin. So uh, yung, uh, dahil yan ay nakakapit sa water in dissolved form, so for example, uh, dissolved yan in water, so that is what we call the osmotic force. Then we have, so this is the attraction of ions to other solutes of water. Then the other one is the gravitational force, which refers to the force acting on soil water, which tends to pull the water downward. So from the word itself, gravitational force. So uh, the, uh, the 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 presence of gravity. Okay, like for example, yung uh, di ba yung yung soil natin nasa taas siya, di ba? For example, eto yung soil natin. Then may water tayo sa sa ibabaw. So, ang tendency niyan is to fall uh, downward. So, that is what we call the gravitational force. Diba? Always, uh, the gravity causes us parang hinihila tayo pa baba. So, that's the gravitational uh, force. Then, uh, soil water characteristics. So, the soil water characteristic curves have two wide-ranging categories of soil water measurements. First is the amount of water presence, so the water content. So this is how we uh, we measure soil water in our uh, in our how we measure soil in water. So first is to the water content. Tinitingnan natin kung kadano kadami yung yung water sa soil. Like for example, uh, uh, sa sa isang uh, like for example sa isang field, uh, nag-irrigate ka. So, gano kadami yung, uh, yung nilagay mong tubig doon? So, that is about water content. Wherein, the another one is the energy status of, those, uh, of the water, which is the soil water potential. So, ang tinitignan naman dito, yung water pot, yung, uh, like for example, di ba, uh, yung nag-irrigate ka din sa lupa ng tubig. So, ilan ba yung matitira or yung ma-hold na water ng lupa natin? So, that is what we call the soil water potential. So information on, on both manners of measurements is important to completely value or manage water supply and movement in soils. So again, water content is the quantity of water in the soil but does not completely indicate the availability of this water to plants. So yun lang yung uh, kaibahan nila. Yung water content, hindi mo masasabi na yung tubig na nandun kahit na nasa lupa ay available ba para sa halaman. Okay? Wherein the soil water potential embodies the proportional availability of the amount of the water held in the soil profile for plant uptake or use, but rather measures the energy state of water and thus explains certainties of uh, water movement. So yung soil water potential natin, it can dictate the availability of water to plants and also the water movement of in the soil. Okay, yung movement ng anong water natin sa lupa. So to uh for you to understand more, so uh soil water characteristics, the behavior of soil water is largely as associated with the energy status of the water. But the amount of water in the soil is not. Okay? For instance, the fine and coarse textured soil, they will both uh, they will both uh, feel moist, provide water to plants at equal water potentials. However, fine texture soil is remotely superior in terms of its capacity 
sustain water and the period it could supply the plants. This is because the particles and pores are further numerous and smaller in fine textured than in coarse textured soil. Therefore, water films thickness cause more space in the fine textured soil to be completely occupied with water, not air. So as you can see here in this illustration, ito yung sand natin. Then ito yung silt natin. Okay? So yung sand particles natin, as you can see, uh, may, uh, may blue, may blue na, na boundary. So that's the water film. Yun yung uh, uh, tubig na nahawakan nila. So again, di ba, we, uh, we said earlier that water is held by the soil through uh, energy. Di ba? One of that is the, uh, the uh, matrix uh, energy or matrix uh, force. So the matrix force is the, uh, the attraction between the solid and the water. So yung water na yan ay now hold nitong solid na bilog through matrix force. So ayan lang yung tubig na nahawakan ng sand compared to that of the silt. So sa parehas na, na amount or na area, so parehas sila for example yan, parehas sila for example na 1 gram, so mas madaming water ang naho-hold ng silt particles. Okay, that's how uh, uh, the characteristic of water in relation to to sand and silt. So clay. So comparing silt to clay, alam naman natin yung clay is napakaliit. So more mas mas madaming uh, water films ang ma ang mahahawakan ng clay natin compared to sand and silt. Okay? So soil water potential this is the term given or used in scientific soil words to refer to forces holding water in soils. It expresses the specific potential energy of soil water relative to that of water in a standard reference state. Technically, the total soil water potential is defined as the amount of work that must be done per unit quantity of pure water to transport reversibly and isothermally an infinitesimal quantity of water from a, full, from a pool of pure water at a specific elevation at atmospheric pressure to the soil water. This definition stresses that soil water potential is the difference the, between the energy state of soil water and that of the pure free water. So uh, to represent soil water potential, so the total uh, soil water potential is in effect the sum of the contribution of the various forces acting on soil water. So mathematically, it is given as, so the total uh, water potential, so this symbol is the... Uh, Symbol for uh, water potential. So, uh, water, total water potential is equal to the sum of the gravitational potential plus the pressure potential plus the metric potential and the osmotic potential. So, yung osmotic potential natin kanina, diba? it is caused by osmotic force which relates to the attraction of water to ions. Then the matrix potential, which is the attraction of uh, water to soil surface or the matrix. The pressure potential is the uh, the up uh, the effect of pressure in the in the water, and also the what we call uh, with we earlier uh, discussed also the gravitational potential. So the total of that is what we call the soil total soil water uh, potential. So soil water expression. So how we express uh, water? So what is the units of water? So alam lang natin, di ba, pag units ng water is uh, liquid, karaniwan, liters, milliliters. So in soil, water is expressed in three different ways. First is the height in centimeter of a unit column whose weight is balanced by the function under consideration. The greater the height, the, the greater the suction in the water, the lesser is the amount of water present. Okay? So, the first is the height. So, height in centimeter. For example, ito yung ating uh, soil profile. So, may, uh, yung water jan is, this This is uh, the occupation of water. So, the height of that is in centimeter. So, that is how we express uh, soil water. Then, another uh 
Another uh, expression is PF value, which refers to the alg logarithmic of the centimeter height of a unit water column. So it is the uh, more on the, the the logarithmic functions of the centimeter. Okay. Then the uh, next is the bars or the atmosphere unit of the pressure of water is equivalent to its function. The standard uh, at atmosphere is the average air pressure at sea level, 14.7 pounds per square inch. One atmosphere is approximately equal to one bar. It is also equal to 1,000 centimeter. So etong tatlong to, they can be converted... Uh, they can be converted to uh, within each other. Like for example here, so uh, one var is is actually equivalent to 1,000 centimeter. Okay? Di ba? Like for example, pag uh, nag-gather tayo ng data sa, sa uh, rainfall data natin, sa pag-asa. Di ba? Ano ba yung binibigay na data sa atin? So the height of water. Height ng water yung, uh, yung binibigay sa atin. That is on centimeter. Okay. So, etong uh, PF and bars and atmosphere, this is are actually a uh, unit of pressure. So, pressure. For example, ito yung ating uh, soil. So, yung water dyan na naka, nakadikit sa kanya. So, an ano ba yung pressure na i-exert mo para matanggal yung water na to sa lupa? Okay? So, yun yung, uh, that's how the... Uh, the PF value and the bar value is uh, expressed. So, ito naman, ang application naman ito, like for example, pag nag oven tayo ng soil. So, yung uh, karaniwan kasi para ma-measure ma natin kung gano'ng kadami yung amount ng water sa soil, is to, yung kumuha tayo ng soil sample, then ilalagay natin sa oven. Diba? I-wait natin yung soil bago natin ilagay sa oven, titimbangin natin. Then, pagkalagay natin sa, sa, timba, sa oven, syempre, mag evaporate yung water doon, matutuyo yung lupa. Then, titimbangin uli natin. So, yun yung, uh, malalaman natin ngayon kung gano'ng kadami yung water doon sa soil natin. Diba? I-measure lang natin. So, uh, ito yung application ng pressure. So, yung pressure na in-apply mo doon sa oven para matuyo itong lupa. So, that's how uh, it is uh, applied. Yung ating uh, expression ng soil water. So, uh, here we have a uh, soil moisture uh, constant. Yan, press lang sila. So, uh, soil moisture constant natin first is the saturation. So, ito na yung uh, ito na yung uh, yung amount ng ng water sa soil natin in different uh, in different levels or constant. So, di ba for example, pag yung lupa natin, sabi natin basa, sobrang basa. So, ano ba siya? So, it is under saturation. So, first is the uh, soil moisture constant which we call saturation. Saturation is when a soil whose pores are completely filled with water. So, kapag yung soil natin ay basang-basa, for example, kumuha ka ng lupa, then inilubog mo sa tubig, lahat ng spaces doon, lahat ng, ng hangin doon, is i-occupy ng tubig. So, yun yung saturation. Okay, next is the field capacity. So, field capacity is actually one-third atmosphere. So, pag uh, minessure mo yung, yung water ng, uh, ng tinatawag nating field capacity, ito ay may one-third atmosphere. So, ano ba yung field capacity? So, this is, the this is the percentage of water after the soil has been saturated and allowed to drain for two to three days. So, for example nag irrigate tayo ng lupa. So after irrigation, hahayaan natin na 2 ng 2 to 3 days yung lupa natin. So ang mangyayari doon, yung tubig ay bababa nang bababa, ma-drain out. So pag na-drain out 'yon after 2 to 3 days, yun na yung tinatawag nating field capacity. Okay, ibig sabihin, yung maaaring yung mga malalaking spaces doon ay yung tanang tubig. Natanggal na yung tubig doon, napalitan na ng hangin. Okay. Ito yung mga condition na yun. So, the macro pores is without water but micro pores are filled. So, uh, just review what is the difference between macro pores and micro pores. Like, for example, 
Ah, ito yung uh, soil natin. So, yung soil natin, so ito yung may mga malalaking particles dyan. Okay? So, itong mga space na to is what we call macropores. So, yan ay mga macropores. So, karaniwan hangin yung nandyan. Then, itong isang particle ng soil na yan, meron pa siyang mga maliliit na particles. Uh, yung sand, silt, and clay. Yun yung mga organic matter na nagsama-sama. So, yung pore spaces na nandyan is yung tinatawag nating micropores. Okay? Pag sa soil moisture content natin ay saturation, so, uh, etong lahat ng spaces na to ay may tubig. Okay? Pati yung mga spaces dito sa within the uh, within the soil aggregate natin, etong buong to, ay may mga tubig din. Yun yung tinatawag nating saturation. Pero pagdating sa field capacity, yung macropores na yan, bababa na yung tubig. Okay? After 2 to 3 days after irrigation, bababa yung tubig. Pero yung tubig dito, sa loob dito, is meron pa. So that is what we call uh, field capacity. Okay? So water uh, being used by the plants. So yung field capacity natin, ito yung tubig na kung saan... Uh, siya ay naabsorb pa ng halaman. Yung mga yung mga tubig dito kasi, dito sa mga macropores natin, uh, yan ay na, na, bumababa lang or hindi nagagamit ng halaman. Excess lang yan. Kung baga pag nagdidilig ka, dapat uh, hanggang field capacity lang, wag mong, uh, wag mong uh, binabaha. Kasi hindi naman magagamit ng halaman yun. Okay? Unless, syempre, kapag ka hindi na drain out yun, kinabukasan, pwedeng hindi ka na magdilig kasi mas madami pang tubig, hindi naman ang wala doon. Okay? But, it can causes uh, uh, some problems sa, sa lupa natin kasi mawawala na yung hangin sa lupa which is kailangan din ng halaman para maka, makahinga. Di ba? So, it is approximately one-third bar or a PF of 2.53. So, a one-third bar when it is converted into PF which is uh, 2.53. Then, soil is built is best still at a moisture of 2.8 to 4.4 because the soil is friable and maintains its small uh, aggregates. So karaniwan sa pag-land uh, prep, sa pagtitil, di ba, ang lupa natin kailangan is malapit sa field capacity. Kailangan uh, friable siya. Kailangan madali siyang madurog. Okay? Ayaw naman natin yung sobrang lagkit kapag ka pag uh, sobrang sobrang mataas yung moisture niya kapag ka nag drip tayo, di ba? Unless apala uh, yung itatanim natin or crops na gustong-gusto ng mga ng mga madaming moisture. So it also depends on the crops. Then organic soil can be tilled even uh, wetter than uh, 2.8 because they have stable aggregates. So it also depends on the uh, on the type of the aggregates na meron tayo sa lupa. Kung mataas naman yung organic matter content, so siyempre, pwedeng mas mataas yung moisture kasi yung, uh, yung soil organic matter naman natin is mas ma, mas ma, mas madami siyang mag-absorb ng, uh, ng moisture compared to mineral soil natin, yung sun, silt, and clay. Then uh, we have, uh, next is the wilting point. So ano ba yung wilting point? So, ito, yung wilting point naman ay mas mababa sa field capacity. So, the moisture condition and at which the ease of release of water to the plant roots is just barely too small to counterbalance the transpiration losses. So, the wilting point is called as wilting coefficient or permanent wilting percentage. It is about 15 bars or a PF of 4.18. So, 15 bars yung unit niya. Ibig sabihin, Mas mataas, di ba, dito sa sa, uh, sa one-third bar or 0 0.33 bars. So, uh, 15 bar, mas mataas yung wilting point kasi mas madami ng natanggal na tubig. Mas madami ng pressure na in-apply. So, yung wilting point, for example, eto, yung uh, mga tubig dyan is... Mawawala na din. Ibig sabihin, for example, kinuha na, uh, inabsorb na ng ito yung halaman natin. Inabsorb niya na yung mga tubig dito sa micropores. So, ibig sabihin, mawawalan na ng mawawalan ng tubig dyan. So, ang mangyayari, 
mamamatay na yung halaman. Kaya din siya tinawag na wilting point. Kasi ito na yung time na kung saan yung halaman hindi niya na kayang i-absorb yung tubig na nandito. Or wala na siyang ma-absorb na tubig. So that's wilting point. Okay? Then the hygroscopic coefficient, the moisture tension in which soil water is in equilibrium with an atmosphere of 98% water vapor saturation or 98% relative humidity. This corresponds to PF of 4.15 or 31 atmosphere. Note that 100% relativity has zero tension, hence soils is saturated with water. So, mas uh, kakaunti na yung tubig sa wilting point, mas kakaunti pa yung tubig dito sa hygroscopic coefficient. Okay? Kasi yung, yung uh, for example, itong isang, uh, 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 itong isang particle natin, yan, so, Ito yung isa dyan, ha? ito yung isa dyan. So, may matitira at matitira dyan na water films. Hindi na kayang i-absorb to ng halaman. Kaya wilting coefficient na siya. Mababawasan pa yan ng mababawasan hanggang sa sobrang nipis na lang. Yun yung tinatawag nating hygroscopic water from the word hygroscopic coefficient. Okay? Karaniwan na achieve to kapag uh, nag-undergo ng uh, nag-undergo ng ng oven drying, pag yung lupa natin is dinala natin sa oven dry and we set the relative humidity is about 98%. So, ibig sabihin talagang um, iya-absorb yung water dito, matatanggal dyan. So, ninipis ng ninipis. So, that's what we call the hygroscopic coefficient. Mas kakaunting uh, tubig. So, that is our uh, four soil moisture constant. So, we have saturation, we have the field capacity, then we have the wilting point, and the hygroscopic coefficient. Then, uh, we have the oven dry again. So, uh, hygroscopic coefficient is actually mas, uh, mas madami pa siyang uh, water compared to what we call the uh, oven dry. So, sa oven dry kasi we can set the limit. So, kapag tinaasan natin yung temperature sa oven dry, so, mas kakaunti, mas mababawasan pa ng mababawasan yung tubig doon. So, we have soil uh, in oven when it is reached an equilibrium with a water pressure of an even 105 degrees centigrade. So, karaniwan yung nilalagay natin yung uh, soil natin magdamag 24 hours sa oven dry with, with 105 degrees centigrade. So, uh, for example, naglagay tayo ng uh, soil dito, then hindi natin sa bubok ngayon Hindi natin siya bubuksan hanggang mamayang hapon, so papatayin natin. So tomorrow, bubuksan uli natin uh, yung, oven, yung oven para matuyo yung lupa. So ganun yung oven drying. Ganun, ganun gina, ginagawa. So to compare you with the, uh, the depth of the, uh, the moisture to the different soil moisture constant, makikita natin yung saturation. Yung bars niya is 0 0.001. Yung depth niya is 1, and then yung PF niya is 0. Okay? So, PF, ibig sabihin 0, walang pressure na kailangan ni-apply para matanggal yung tubig doon. ba? Kasi pag saturation, yung tubig doon, matatanggal basta. Kasi wala namang, uh, hindi naman siya uh, nakadikit doon sa lupa. Walang, uh, walang energy na nag-hold sa kanya. So, 0. Then, field capacity, tataas yung uh, PF, which is 2.53. Then, wilting, co if wilting point is 4.18. Then, 4.5. Then, PF is 7. Then, yung depth ng, wat ng soil sa saturation is 1. Okay? Ibig sabihin, there is no, uh, there is a saturated saturation ng, 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 uh, ng water sa soil. So, uh, dito sa bars and depth, actually, uh, it is uh, commonly na napagbabaliktad. Kasi there are two types, kung paano, there are two uh, ways on how we we measure the moisture in the soil. Diba? For example, itong uh, soil nat, ito yung soil particle natin. Ito yung water dyan. So, pag yung, uh, yung pag ang pag-measure natin is Kung paano itinatanggal, kung ano yung in-apply mong pressure. So, for example, ito yung uh, pressure. 
Kung gaano kadami yung pressure na inapply mo para matanggal tong lupa, ay uh, tong tubig sa lupa. So that's another one. Doon mo malalaman kung gaano kadami tong uh, tubig dito yung pressure na inapply mo. 'Di ba? Pag zero pressure, ibig sabihin hindi ka hindi ka nag-apply ng ng energy pero natanggal yung tubig. Nabawasan yung tubig. So that's zero pressure. So, so habang tumataas 'yan, ibig sabihin mas kumakaunti yung tubig. 'Di ba? So there is another way naman, ito yung uh, ito yung soil particle natin, ito yung water, yung pagkakadikit naman nung uh, nung water dito sa lupa. That's the another way on how we measure uh, soil water. Kaya karaniwan is ah uh, ito minsan yung bars and yung depth. Karaniwan yung saturation is ginagawa nilang negative values. So meron kayong makikita sa mga references, karaniwan negative values yung bars and and depth. Okay? Kasi uh, negative yung uh, pressure o yung pahilang pressure yung minimeasure nila kung paano nakakapit yung tubig dito sa, sa lupa. Okay? So to illustrate to you the different soil moisture constant, again, it, ito yung saturation. So ito yung mga soil natin. So yan, yung tubig is freely na, na nalalaglag. Then, ito yung field capacity natin. Then, ito yung ating wilting point. Then, meron tayong hygroscopic coefficient din dito. Then, meron tayong uh, oven dry. Diba? Mas, uh, mas dry yun. Pero karaniwan sa, in relation to plant, uh, in relation to uh, requirement of uh, water ng plants, itong tinitignan natin yung saturation, field capacity, and wilting point. So, uh, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, yung negative values, kung makikita nyo. Yan, negative values siya. Pero kanina, positive. So, uh, some references uses positive, some uh, references uh, uses negative. So, ito yung solid. Ito yung solid, ito yung soil natin. So, yung, uh, yung nakadikit dyan na tubig is what we call the hygroscopic water. Okay. So, ito yung hygroscopic coefficient natin. So, pag mas madami ng tubig ng konti, so uh, hanggang dito, okay, ito yung tinatawag nating wilting coefficient. Okay, ito yung wilting coefficient. Ibig sabihin, pag ito na lang yung tubig nung, uh, pag ito na lang yung tubig nung ating, yan, pag dito na lang yung tubig ng lupa natin, mamamatay na yung halaman, hindi niya na kayang i-absorb. Pero pag mas madami uling tubig, so eto na yung available na tubig. Marireach na na yung tinatawag nating field capacity. So ito yung field capacity. So the water between the wilting coefficient and the field capacity is what we call the available water. Available water kasi available siya para sa halaman. Okay? So, the available water is the difference between field capacity and the wilting coefficient. Okay? Ang tawag natin dito sa, sa available, unavailable and available water from hygroscopic coefficient to field capacity ay capillary water. Okay? Then, kapag sumobra na yung tubig natin sa field capacity, mas dumami pa siya, ito yung tinatawag nating drainage or yung superfluous water or yung gravitational water natin. Ibig sabihin, hindi na siya nakadikit. Okay? Sa lupa. So, parte po siya ng lupa pero hindi siya, na, hindi siya na-hold ng water. Kaya na-reach niya yung saturation. Okay? So, ganyan yung illustration para mas naintindihan niyo yung kaninang uh, soil moisture constant natin. So, etong ah, uh, Itong available what unavailable, available and superfluous water natin is, ang tawag natin sa kanila is biological classification of soil water. Kasi nakadepende sa halaman. Okay? So, pakitandaan nyo, superfluous water is free or the drainage water. Okay? Then, available water is the moisture held between the, the field capacity and the permanent wilting point. So, FC means field capacity and a PWP means permanent wilting point. 
Then uh, third one is the unavailable water, which is moisture held at permanent wilting point. Then we also have the physical classification of water, yung, uh, yung nasa baba kanina. We have the free or the drainage water, which is loosely held, less than 0 0.01 atmosphere. We have the capillary water held between field capacity and hygroscopic coefficient. Functions as soil solution and not all are available to plants. So ito yon yung capillary water natin between uh, hygroscopic and field capacity. Then we have the hygroscopic water. So this is water vapor held at the hygroscopic coefficient, which is actually 10,000 atmosphere. Okay? So ito na yung pinakakakaunti na tubig. Talagang hindi na matanggal-tanggal sa lupa. Okay? Dahil sa sobrang dikit niya. So uh, these are the, uh, the, the relationship of soil water and uh, on a soil profile with regards to the soil depth. So soil depth means ito yung surface ng soil 0 to 15 centimeters. So for example, ito yung soil natin from 0 to 15 centimeter. So ito yung kanyang field capacity. So ang field capacity is 45.17%. Ibig sabihin 45.17% ng uh, ng weight ng soil natin ay pwedeng maging water. Okay? So this is how we uh, also uh, use na unit ng uh, soil water is yung percent. Mamaya meron tayong uh, computation about uh, uh, soil water. So 0 to 15, meron siyang field capacity na 45.17%. Uh, Makikita natin yung wilting, co wilting point niya is 24.55. Ibig sabihin, pag uh, 45 45.17 minus 24.55. Yan yung available water natin. ba? Kasi field capacity at saka wilting point. Siyempre yung pagitan nilang dalawa, ganoon kadami yung available na tubig sa lupa. Then the bulk density. So we already discussed bulk density. Then the available soil water. So uh, pag minus yun yung dalawa yan, so that will be the, the result. So uh, we will have a uh, uh, short uh, recitation. So I have here the item number one and two. So lagyan ko ng item. One and two as an example. Then if you want to answer two, uh, three to ten, you can chat in. Or pwede kayong mag-raise, uh, mag-unmute, uh, mag then sabihin nyo kung gusto nyo mag-answer para sa inyong uh, uh, recitation. So that will be added on your uh, final exam. Okay, five points. I think I can give you uh, five points uh, each sa magkasagot ng ating uh, computation ngayon. So for example, we have a moisture content ng, na 30%. Okay. 30% yung tubig natin sa lupa. Then, ang kayang hawakan lang ng lupa is 28% because that is the field capacity. 28%. So, ang permanent uh, wilting point natin is 5%. Ibig sabihin, pag na-reach na ng, ng tubig na 5% na lang, yun ay iwan, hindi, niya, hindi na siya available sa, sa, sa halaman. Tama? So, nakuha natin yung gravitational water. Bakit tayo may gravitational water na 2? Dahil, ang moisture content natin ay 30, pero ang kayang hawakan lang ng lupa ay 28. So, 30 minus 28 is 2. Ibig sabihin, may sumobra na, na tubig. Okay? That is the gravitational water. Then, yung available water naman natin, yung available water natin is 23. Saan nakuha yung 23? So it is the field capacity between the permanent wilting point. Okay? 28 minus 5 is 3. Diba sabi natin, yung pagitan ng, ng permanent uh, wilting point at saka yung field capacity, yun yung available na, na water para sa halaman. 
So that is 23. Okay? Then a uh, number 2, we have moisture content of 25. We have the field capacity of 25. We have the permanent wilting point of 14. So wala tayong gravitational water, zero. Okay? Kasi 25 minus 25, so 25 yung moisture content natin, E25 din yung field capacity, ibig sabihin nahawakan lahat ng lupa yung yung moisture ng ng, uh, ng soil natin, moisture nahawakan lahat ng lupa. So zero, walang na, walang na, na excess or na drain. Then uh, dahil permanent wilting point natin is 14, so 25 minus 14 is 11. Okay? Ganyan lang, madali lang. So this will be part of your uh, exam. So who wants to uh to try answering uh, number three? Ako po, sir. Email three. Sir, ako po. Ano po? Negative three po. Uh, okay, Paki. Uh, I think uh, pauna, i, ano na lang siguro, i-chat nyo na lang. Yung number then, number, for example, number one, uh quit then 2 and 23 so ganyan ganyan sa chinat ko so you can uh, see you can, uh, so for example 1 then 2 and 23 2 and 23 2 Yan. So si uh, John Kenneth, I think, sa number 3, so si John Kenneth, ang sagot niya is uh, 3 and 15. Then number four is uh, Nelvin, negative nine and eleven. The number five, see Jeffrey. Visconde, 13 and uh, 23. Then number 6 is si Mark Jasper Cruz. Thirteen and four. So kung sino yung unang nag uh, nag uh, nagcha-chat ano. So number 7 is si Angelica intacto which is 8 and 5. Then number 8 na tayo. Si Joshua Olpindo. Seven and uh, twelve. Then number nine is John Kenneth Rivera. Again, si John Kenneth Rivera, which is tama ba si John Kenneth ba? The number nine. Four and fifteen, and then number ten is J Mark and 
Alderoy. It's 1 and 8. Okay, let's uh, check now the, the correct answer. So first is, nakikita nyo ba yung uh, pen? First is uh, number three. So gravitational water, so yung excess. So dahil ang moisture content natin ay 16 lang, ang field capacity natin is 19, so the, uh, the gravitational water would be zero. Okay? Walang excess. Kasi mas kakaunti yung moisture content kaysa sa field capacity. Then, the available water will be available water natin is 12. Dahil 16 minus 4. Okay? Kasi ang tubig lang natin sa lupa is 16. Hindi naman sinabing 19 ang water natin. Yung 19 is yung field capacity. Ibig sabihin, ito lang yung capacity ng lupa. ba? Pero ang tubig talaga natin is 16 lang. So, 16 times uh, minus 4 is 12. So, 12 na lang yung available water natin. Okay? So, uh, mali si uh, mali, pero uh, let's uh, then uh, you can uh, I think uh, meron pa siyang dito, sinagot sa number 9. Let's uh, check first. Again. Then, number 4 is the gravitational water. So, again, moisture content is lower than the field capacity. So, the gravitational water is zero. Wala, walang uh, loss. So, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, indicate negative numbers here kasi hindi naman natin hahanapin yung nawawalang tubig dito. We are just looking uh, the gravitational, kung ano lang yung lumabas. So dahil wala namang wala namang nawalang tubig or in excess water, so that will also be zero. Okay? So the available water is 8 minus 6, so that will be 2. Tama? So moisture content minus the permanent wilting point. Dahil yung field capacity is hindi natin na na attain kasi mas kakaunti yung tubig natin. Then we have number 5. So moisture content so uh 45 minus 32. So 13, so we have 13, tama? Then 23. So this is a, this must be 32 minus 9. Kahit na mas madami pa tong moisture content 45 Pero hindi naman available yung sosobra. ba sabi natin, ang available lang is within the field capacity. So, 32 minus 9. So, that will be 23. Tama? 23. So, tama si uh, Jeffrey. Then, we have uh, number 6. 27, 14, and 10. So, our gravitational water will be 27 minus 14. So that will be that will be 13 then the available water will only be 4 so that is correct then the uh, the number 7 field capacity is uh, I think um uh, meron mali dito kasi mas mataas yung mas mataas yung permanent tilting points sa field capacity so mali yung data so I think we can uh, uh consider this as, as uh, correct even though uh, mal dahil mali yung uh, ating data. But if we use it as 18, dapat mas mataas yung per field capacity, syempre, kaysa sa permanent wilting point. ba? So, ang excess moisture natin dyan is pwede maging 10 at saka, so 28 minus 18, so 10. Then, permanent uh, available water is 18 minus 13 will be 5. So, correct. Then, uh, in number 8, so, there is no excess water, so that will be 0. Then, this will be 8, kasi 19 minus 11. Then, number 9 is, we don't have excess water again, dahil mas maliit yung moisture content. Then, we have 
26 minus 15, that will be 11. Then, may sure content, may one na excess water tayo, then may uh, 8 tayo na, that is correct. So, it must be number 9, must be 0 and 11 kasi 26 uh, minus 15. Kasi yung field capacity hindi niya na-reach. Okay? So, question. So, paki, uh, I will be screenshot it. So, eto may plus 3 na sa exam. Plus 3, then plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, uh, plus 5. Si John Kenneth Rivera, it will be considered as plus 5. So, tatanggalin natin itong plus uh, 3, yung mas mataas yung kukunin natin. Then, plus 5. So, uh, please, pag nag-attendance kayo ngayon, yung mga nagsagot na ito is, paki-indicate dun sa, sa topics discuss or dun sa, sa last item, yung plus nyo, para hindi ko makalimutan. Pero, I will save this. I will screenshot my, ano, para makita rin. Kaso, hindi ko alam yung section nyo, kaya, mas maganda na mag- uh, Ilagay nyo doon sa attendance natin ngayon. So, question about this one. So, so you'll more content. Kasi part to ng inyong magiging exam. Wala naman po, sir. Okay. Thanks, Nelvin. Other, uh, other person? Meron pa ba na may tanong? Wala po, sir. Okay, so yeah, let's uh let's proceed, I think. So uh in measurement of soil moisture in the field or in the laboratory, we have different methods. So first is uh we have the gravimetric method, we have the resistance method, we have the neutron scattering, we have the Y attenuation or the scattering, then we have the heat pulse uh, method. So here is the definition of the different method, the different method. So gravimetric method. This is the most commonly used method to measure soil water content by mass. A sample of moisture with known weight usually taken in course from the field in a dried and in oven in an oven at a temperature of 105 to 100 degrees centigrade for at least 24 hours. So just like I said earlier, so gravimetric method ang tawag doon. Yung pagkukuha ka ng soil, tinlagay mo sa oven for 24 hours. So, uh, di ba, for example, karaniwan yung ginagawa for 12 hours, tapos hindi bubuksan yung, dapat hindi bubuksan yung oven, then, tapos hindi uli ng uh, 12 hours kapag pagpapatayin mo yung, uh, sa laboratory kasi karaniwan pinapatay yung oven after the day. Kasi hindi mo naman iiwan na magdamag yun na nakasindi. Di ba, that is uh, uh, delikado. So, karaniwan sa laboratory, pag kinandak natin yan, sa, sa laboratory, 12 hours today, 12 hours then uh, tomorrow. Pero hindi mo bubuksan yung oven kasi papasok yung ibang moisture that can affect your uh, data. Then we have the resistance method. This method takes the uh, takes advantage of the fact that the electrical resistance of a certain porous material such as chipsum, nylon, fiberglass is related to their water content. When these blocks with uh, suitably embedded electrodes are planted in moist soil, moist soil they absorb soil moisture until an uh, equilibrium is uh, rich. The electrical resistance in the blocks is determined by their moisture content and in turn uh, by the tension or suction of water in the nearby soil. The relationship between the resistance reading the soil moisture percentage can be determined by calibration. So karaniwan, ito yung with the use of gypsum block. So I have experienced it. So yung, uh, for example, ito yung pot nyo with soil yan, may soil dyan sa ilalim, then may ilulubog dyan na gypsum block, so ganyan yung itsura nun. Then may elect true electrode, dahil yung resistance, so may digital measurement yan. So yan, I, dito maririd kung ilan yung moisture content mo. Yan, by uh, percent. So yan yung uh, resistance method. Ganyan lang siya, itinata inilalagay siya sa loob ng lupa or iniiwan siya doon. Then we have nutrient scattering. Then we have also the Y attenuation scattering in the heat pulse method. 
which is not uh i think uh, i have not yet experienced these methods but is uh done in the laboratory so you can just read it then we have the uh, computation in soil uh, moisture content so gravimetric method so moisture content by mass so moisture content is the mc then the the fw means the press weight then the open the odw is the oven dry weight okay for example you have uh, 100 uh, grams soil press weight kumuha ka ng 100 grams sa lupa nyo then inilagay mo sa oven after ng 24 hours na pag oven nalaman mo na 80 percent grams na lang yung soil mo so ilan ngayon yung moisture content mo so anyone who can answer this so uh, i think i can give, give also apply five points para sa exam so si john kenneth uh 20 percent moisture so let's uh let's use the uh the formula so mc is equal to fresh weight minus oven dry weight over oven dry weight so fresh weight is equal to 100 grams minus 80 grams over 80 grams so ilan yung moisture content Do you have a calculator on you? So 100 minus 80 is 20 divided by 80 is actually 0 0.25. So that will be converted into percent times 100. So the moisture content is actually 25%. Okay? That's how you calculate the moisture content of the soil. Okay, hindi lang siya basta-basta uh, percent. You can, 20% uh, uh, if we, if the moisture is uh, based on the, the press weight. But in soil moisture content, in gravimetric method, we based our percent moisture on the oven dry weight. Okay. Kaya 25% ang ating sagot. In soil measurement, again, the uh, the basis for soil moisture is the oven dry weight, not the fresh weight. Okay? So, if uh, if uh, we are computing for soil moisture content using uh, volume, volume or liters, so the moisture content is equal to the volume of water over volume uh, total okay so it is not commonly done naman yung sa volumetric content but we can uh, also use if you are using uh, by volume so you just need to measure the volume of the soil kasi karadiwan naman yung soil kasi di ba kinukuha natin uh, sa field Pinapa, uh, uh, pinapala natin kinukuha natin through shovel so, hindi natin makikita yung volume talaga nun. Mahirap kunin yung volume nung, nung pinala natin na lupa. Unless, kukuha tayo ng core. Yung core, iba for example, eto yung soil. Then, ilulubog natin dyan yung cylinder na lata. Then, measure natin yung volume. Pero karaniwan, dahil uh, ini-slice lang natin yung soil natin, kumukuha lang tayo ng piraso ng lupa. So, hindi natin na, na measure yung volume ng total ng soil natin. Okay? Then the depth of water, the volume, uh, how the depth of water is computed. So HW or the depth of water is equal to the depth of soil times the water content by volume. So using this, uh, the data from the volumetric moisture content, you can also uh, get the, the depth of water by multiplying it from the depth of the soil. Okay? So soil moisture content, the degree of saturation. So how saturated is, this, is the soil? So this is how we compute it. So saturation is equal to the volume of water over the volume of pore space. The volume of 
water is the VW and then VF is the volume of pore space. Again, what is the volume of pore space? The volume of pore space is the volume of air plus the volume of water. Diba? Kung natatandaan nyo yung ating, for example, ito yung soil natin. So, ito yung solid, ito yung air, ito yung uh, water. So, that is the volume of solid, that's the volume of air, and that is the volume of water. So, this will be the volume of pore space. Then, total, volume of uh, solid plus volume of air plus volume of water is volume total. Okay, that's how we identify the volume of the soil. So, soil moisture content. So, I think I can also give uh, plus points to those who can answer these questions. So, first is, uh, uh, sample muna tayo. So, this is also included on your exam. So, a, sam a sample of soil weighing 100 grams contains 16% water. What is the oven dry weight of the sample? So, ngayon naman, alam mo na ngayon yung fresh weight ng lupa mo at saka alam mo din yung moisture content. Ang tinatanong naman is yung oven dry weight. Okay? So, the formula on that is oven dry weight is equal to fresh weight over 1 plus the percent moisture content over 100. So, number one is the fresh weight is 100 grams over 1 plus 16 divided by 100. So, it's equal to 100 divided by 1.16. Kasi 1 plus 0.16 is equal to 1.16. So, 100 divided by 1.16 is equal to 86.21 grams. So, ito yung oven dry weight natin. Okay? So, syempre, dapat uh, mas mababa yung mas oven dry weight kisa sa fresh weight na 100 grams. Okay? Let's uh, check our answer. So, moisture content is equal to fresh weight over uh, a minus oven dry weight, oven dry weight over fresh weight. So fresh weight natin is 100 minus 86.21 over times 100 so that will be times 100 so that will be 15.99 percent or yung 16 percent na ito okay nakuha nyo so tama yung sagot natin kasi 15 point nag, nag ano kasi tayo dito nag uh, nag uh, round off 86.99 209 kasi yan. So, kaya naging 15.99 lang. Na dapat 16% yan. Nakuha nyo? Nakuha nyo ba? Yung ating 15.99%? Okay, sige. You can try number 2. What is the uh, final, uh, what is the answer? So you can chat in. Asagot na ba to yung uh, 30? Si Jameson Belayo, nagsagot na siya ng 38.46. <coughs> Sige, yung number 3 naman. Sige, habang may nagsasagot, paki-explain mo na Jameson Velayo if okay lang. Kung paano mo nakuha yung number 2. No, Jameson? Okay. 
Hello, Jameson. Hello po, sir. Yan, you can see your... Yes, yes. Apo. So, bali, ang nakuha ko po is 38.46. So, paano po siya naging? So, yung formula po natin is ODW is equals to FW over 1 plus percent MC over 100. So, ang given po nating FW is 500 gram, eh, 50 grams sorry, over 1 plus 30 percent over 100. So, makukuha po natin is 50 grams over 1.30. So, 50 divided by 1.30 is equals to 38.46 grams. Okay, I think a uh, similar answer also with the, the others. Tama ba? Sige. Kung uh, iba yung sagot nyo, you can uh, raise your answer also on the chat or on the call. So, yeah, we can give uh, Jameson, uh, Jameson, Pelayo, another uh, plus 5 on the exam. So, you can indicate also na dalawa yung uh, plus mo kung dalawa dun sa attendance natin mamaya. Okay, so number 3. I think we have here uh, Rika May or Tega. Okay, Rika May, can you uh, also discuss your answer? Eleven point eleven percent po sa gut ko. Okay, sige. How did you compute it? Sinunod ko lang po yung formula niya na yung percent MC equals FW minus ODW over FW times 100 po. Okay. Ano po? 20 minus 18 over 18 equal, times 100 equals 11.11 .11 po. Tama po ba? So, meron bang nag-question ng answer ni, uh, ano, ni Rika? I think wala naman. So, I think it is correct. So, 20 minus 18, that will be 2 divided by 18. So, that will be uh, 11.11 percent. .11%. So then, uh, also Rika will Rika me Ortega get uh, plus five on the uh, exam. 